Hi guys, I am Dr. Ramesh Krishnan. And in this lecture video, I will discuss about approach to evaluation of anemia with clinical cases. In this lecture video, I will discuss about how to evaluate microcytic, normocytic and macrocytic anemia with clinical cases and lab investigations. So, let's first start our discussion that how we will evaluate microcytic anemia. I will be discussing about how to approach microcytic anemia. But first discuss, let's start with a case presentation, a case, a hypothetical case. An 18 year old female patient who presented with easy fatigability, breathlessness and on examination pallor was present. On further investigations, we ordered labs investigations that is complete blood count CVC and in CVC our positive findings were RBC was 2.8 into 10 to the power 6 but microgram hemoglobin was 7.4 gram per deciliter mean corpuscular volume was 62 femtoliter mch that is concentration of hemoglobin inside the rvc was 20.8 picogram red cell distribution rate that is rdw was 18.2 percent We ordered and peripheral smear examinations and in peripheral smear examinations our positive findings there RBC was microcytic and hypochromic and red cell distribution rate was greater than 18%. Here you can see the size of the RBC is smaller and it is compared with the largest WBC that is given in the sample. It is hypochromic because the hypochromicity is greater than one third, one third of the uh, size of the RBC. That's why it is hypochromic. With these complete blood count findings and findings and peripheral ex smear examinations, we showed microcytic and hypochromic RBCs. Thus, our differential diagnosis for the microcytic and hypochromic anemia could be iron deficiency anemia, beta thalassemia. Lead poisoning leading to sideroblastic anemia or anemia of chronic disease. These could be our differential diagnosis. So, what are the further investigations that we should do to come to the conclusion that the cause of microcytic and hypochromic anemia is because of any one of these causes. We will come to evaluate the case later in our discussion but firstly start how we will approach such patients. Firstly in the complete blood count that is CVC we look for the three cell lines 
and on the basis of these three cell lines we can classify it as anemia leukemia thrombocytopenia or pancytopenia if hemoglobin is less than 10 g then it is anemia if wbc is less than 4000 or leukocyte count is less than 1000 per microliter then it is leukopenia if platelet is less than 1 lakh per deciliter then it is thrombocytopenia and if the defect is in greater than two cell lines then it is called as pancytopenia we will concentrate on how to evaluate anemia so if hemoglobin is less than 10 g per deciliter then it is a case of anemia after we have classified the patient to be anemic we should look at the rbc indices and on the basis of this rbc indices we should check for the accuracy of the data and how to check for the accuracy of the data we should calculate packed cell volume and this calculated packed cell volume should correlate with the packed cell volume given in our data given in our lab investigation and how to calculate this packed cell volume packed cell volume is calculated by multiplying hemoglobin given in our sample by 3 and if this hemo packed cell volume that we have if this hematocrit that we have calculated correlate with the hematocrit given in the sample then given data is accurate and there is no hemodilution or concentrations and we can proceed further if it does not correlate with the hematocrit that we have calculated with the hematocrit given in the sample then there is hemodilution or concentration and the given data is unreliable now after checking the accuracy of the data we should calculate mcv that is mean corpuscular volume and mcv equals to pack cell volume multiplied by 3 and on the basis of this anemia is classified into three sub types if mcv is less than 80 femtoliter then it is microcytic anemia if it is between 80 to 100 femtoliter then it is normocytic anemia and if it is greater than 100 femtoliter then it is macrocytic anemia after we have segregated and sub classified the anemia into three sub types we will proceed further with how to evaluate macrocytic anemia our point of discussion here at the present is to evaluate microcytic anemia so if the my patient is having mean corpuscular volume less than 80 femtoliter then it is a case of microcytic anemia then we will calculate maltzer index and what is the maltzer index maltzer index is mcv multiplied by rbc quant mean corpuscular volume multiplied by rbc quant and on the basis of this iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia could be differentiated these are the two causes of 
माइक्रोसिटिक अनिमिया एंड दिस टू माइक्रोसिटिक अनिमिया कुड बी डिफ्रेंसिएटेड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ मेल्टेजर इंडेक्स If the Meltzer index comes to be greater than 13, then it is a case of iron deficiency anemia. If it comes to be less than 13, then it is a case of beta thalassemia. After we have calculated the Meltzer index and differentiated these two microcytic anemia, we can look at the red cell distribution rate what is this red cell distribution rate this red cell distribution rate is difference between a smallest and largest rvc in the sample if the difference is high then red cell distribution rate will be high and on the basis of this red cell distribution rate we can differentiate various microcytic anemia if the red cell distribution rate is greater than 16 then it is iron deficiency anemia and if the red cell distribution rate is in the normal range then it could be due to anemia of chronic disease or hemoglobinopathy like beta thalassemia that thus through this red cell distribution rate we can differentiate iron deficiency anemia anemia of chronic disease and hemoglobinopathy this red cell distribution rate could be in the higher range or in the normal range further we have differentiated iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia on the basis of meltzer index and further with a red cell distribution rate we should order four iron studies these through these iron studies we can differentiate various microcytic anemia here i have included iron deficiency anemia with the normal red cell distribution rate only to compare with the other causes of normal red cell distribution rates microcytic anemia in the iron studies we ordered for serum iron serum ferritin and total iron winding capacity in iron deficiency anemia serum iron and serum ferritin are decreased from the normal whereas total iron winding capacity is increased in the anemia of chronic disease serum iron is decreased serum ferritin is increased and total iron winding capacity is decreased whereas in hemoglobinopathy serum iron is increased total iron winding capacity is decreased and serum ferritin is in the normal range thus through these iron studies we can differentiate various microcytic anemia so serum iron is decreased in iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disease where it is increased in hemoglobinopathy total iron binding capacity is increased in iron deficiency anemia and decreased in anemia of chronic disease and hemoglobinopathy thus we can differentiate iron deficiency anemia from anemia of chronic disease and beta thalassemia by looking at the total iron binding capacity here as serum ferritin is decreased in iron deficiency anemia and it is increased in anemia of chronic disease 
and normal in hemoglobinopathies. Thus, through ordering or invest uh, by ordering for serum ferritin, we can differentiate iron deficiency anemia and anemia of chronic disease. Thus, we have differentiated various microcytic anemia by looking at the iron studies. Further, these uh, hemoglobinopathies could be differentiated by looking at the hemoglobin electrophoresis. If on hemoglobin electrophoresis, if HbA12 is in the normal range, then it is a case of sideroblastic anemia that is due to lead poisoning or if it is in the higher range, then it could be due to beta thalassemia. Thus, by following these algorithms, we can come to the exact conclusion, the cause of microcytic anemia. Thus, what we have learned that firstly, while we are evaluating for the case of microcytic anemia, look at the complete blood gone, CBC, then classify it as anemia, then we should exclude the hemodilutions or hemoconcentrations by calculating pack cell volume and correlating it with the pack cell given in the sample, then calculate mean corpuscular volume and classify it as microcytic anemia. Then we should calculate Meltzer index to differentiate microcytic anemia that is iron deficiency from beta thalassemia. Then we should look at the red cell distribution rate and further differentiate iron deficiency anemia from anemia of chronic disease and beta thalassemia. Further, we should perform iron, iron studies to differentiate various causes of microcytic anemia and at the last hemoglobin electrophoresis to differentiate hemoglobinopathies. So, this was about how to evaluate microcytic anemia. So, again come to the our initial slide and initial case that how we will approach such patients. Here we have seen that this patient is an 18 year old female who presented with fatigability, breathlessness and pallor. So, with these findings, the my patient could be having anemia or any cardiovascular causes could also be the possibility. On further investigations, complete blood count shows hemoglobin to be 7.4, RBC, WBC was in the normal range and platelet was in the normal range. So, no leukopenia or thrombocytopenia was present and patient is anemic. Then we should calculate for the hematocrit. Hematocrit is calculated by hemoglobin multiplied by 3 and this comes to be 22.1 and this equals to the hematocrit given in the sample. So, there is no hemodilution or concentration and uh, the given data is reliable. Then we should calculate the MCV and this MCV is hematocrit multiplied by 3 and this comes to be 63. And on the basis of which it is a case of microcytic anemia. Since MCV is less than 80, therefore it is a case of microcytic anemia. 
then we will calculate the Meltzer index. Meltzer index is MCB multiplied by RVC and this comes to be 22.2. So, Meltzer index is greater than 13. So, it is a case of iron deficiency anemia and beta thalassemia is ruled out. Then look at the red cell distribution width and this red cell distribution width is in the higher range. So, iron deficiency anemia could be the possibility it is greater than 16 and thus anemia of chronic disease or hemoglobinopathies are ruled out. Thus, this is how CBC is, we should approach with the CBC. On further investigations, iron studies were performed and iron studies revealed serum iron, serum ferritin and percentage transfer in saturations to be in the lower sites, whereas total iron binding capacity is increased. Thus, total iron binding capacity is increased. This rule dot anemia of chronic disease. Serum iron is decreased. Serum ferritin is decreased. And this decreased serum ferritin rule dot anemia of chronic disease. Serum iron is decreased and this also ruled dot anemia of chronic disease from beta thalassemia and iron deficiency anemia. Reticulocyte count was 1.5% and this ruled dot hemolytic causes of anemia. Meltzer index was greater than 13, so beta thalassemia is ruled out. Thus, through this approach, what will be our final diagnosis? So, it is a case of iron deficiency anemia. This is how we can approach such patients.